Welcome to Divine Downloads. I'm your host, Cassandra Botzak, and if you're tuning in on my YouTube channel, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, This episode is totally different than my usual podcast episodes. I'm going to be sharing with you something very personal, and I thought in light of my recent announcement that I am pregnant with my first child, I wanted to share about my journey to conceiving and how we found out and maybe some of those early things like if there were any signs, stuff like that, um, from both the physical and the spiritual elements of it. And we'll see, this may be the first installment in me sharing more information about my pregnancy and how it has been spiritually and physically because it is definitely both. (laughs) It is a very spiritual time as well as a very embodied time and um, I think one of the things that really helped me along my way when I was um, trying to conceive was listening to other people's stories. I loved hearing about other people's journeys, things they tried, um, everything from spiritual things to physical things Um, and so my hope is that whether some of you are just interested because you're curious because you've been following me for a bit and you want to know about my story or if you're on your own trying to conceive journey or plan to be at some time in the future um, that this will be of service to you. So some of the questions I'm going to cover we're going to talk about were we trying, how long we are trying, some of the things that I did physically and spiritually, as well as, you know, how I ended up finding out, how I told my husband, um, and uh, I think we'll, we'll see how long that takes us. I don't want it to be too long, and we'll do a separate one if you guys are interested to hear about how the journey has been trimester by trimester. Um, So first things first, as soon as I tell someone that we're pregnant, (laughs) they're like, oh, were you trying? (laughs) And yes, the answer is yes. But the extended answer of that is we opened the gates after we got married. We pretty much, uh, you know, said, okay, we're open and available for it to happen, but we're not in a rush and we kind of want it to just happen on its own time and feel really organic and we don't want to be too strategic about it. (laughs) So that's what we did starting on our honeymoon, just open the gates. (laughs) And fast forward six, seven months later now and nothing had happened. (laughs) And so at this point, I start worrying and I'm like, wow, I guess I always thought because I'm super healthy and I've had this probably fear now that I think about it, but most of my life, I thought if someone looked at me the wrong way, I would get pregnant (laughs) and I was so paranoid about being pregnant, you know, before I was married or pregnant, you know, with the wrong person and so when the time came and I feel like a lot of women probably feel this way. Um, when the time came, I actually, I want to, I feel like some women feel this way and then other women feel like it's going to take a really long time. And, (laughs) and it's always such a mixed bag of what happens. It's like, I think the journey to conceiving as well as the pregnancy journey, as well as I'm sure I'm not there yet, but the birth journey and beyond is such a journey of spiritual surrender, (laughs) divine timing, and being humbled (laughs) by how much like what you think is not always what is what the divine plan is right and so I had this mindset of like oh my god I remember literally feeling like after our honeymoon like I must be pregnant I'm probably just probably pregnant right (laughs) right um and so fast forward, that's, we've been open, opening the gates for six, seven months, nothing. And now I'm like, okay, maybe I can be lightly strategic. Now I already was, I was taking, um, a prenatal supplement, 
um, for egg quality. I started that right around our honeymoon. So I was doing that. Um, and if anyone, I'm totally blanking on the name, <laughs> on the name right now, but feel free to DM me or message me if you're looking for um, a good one, especially if you're in your mid thirties and looking for something that really helps with egg quality, mid thirties or above. Um, my girlfriend recommended me this one because it helped her conceive her daughter. Um, and I felt really good about taking it. So anyway, so I was taking that. So that was like, I was doing like bare minimum. I feel like I live a really healthy life. I don't really drink a lot. I, um, you know, yeah, I eat, I'm already living a pretty low tox life. But then at that six, seven month mark, I was like, okay, I really dove into um, some more books and podcasts about prenatal nutrition, nutrition for fertility, um, and made some tweaks in my diet for that um, to just be more conscious of what I was consuming. Because even though I personally didn't feel like I was eating super off the bar. <laughs> um, I knew just having that intention of holding that energy that I am consciously preparing my body to hold a child was also energetically going to help manifest that as well. So it was like a two part process and that also still felt really organic and easy and not putting too much stress on the whole process. Um, so I started doing that and there's you know, if you are trying to conceive and you haven't, if you're just honest with yourself and you're like, I know I'm not living a healthy lifestyle, that I think is the first thing to like take a look at, um, is making sure you're using non-toxic products in your shampoos and your makeups, you know, what you're putting on your body, uh, things like that, because we don't realize how many endocrine disruptors in this world there are. And, um, that's, I think one of the reasons that a lot of women that I spoke to that were having, um, a longer time trying to conceive when they made that switch, it really made a huge impact on them. So, and it's also like all of us should be doing it. That's one of the things I love about the kind of like preconception process is that I feel like at any age, like if you're a woman listening to this and you're not, well, first of all, men should do it too. It's all good. But like, if you're even like, okay, I'm not even married yet. Or I'm like, I know I want kids, but it's a few years down the line, like literally all the information on like a fertility diet or things you can do for your fertility are also things that are literally just going to make you thrive and be radiant and feel good. Um, so have at them as soon as possible. And then it's not as big of like a, a journey, um, when you, when you do start. So then getting more strategic, um, and then also I want to include some of the spiritual. So one of the spiritual things I really had to sit with um, and face was my fears around having a kid. And to get really honest about that, like my husband was, I think, m a mostly clear vessel to call in our child, other than the fact that I think some of his concerns were mostly because he was not quite sure I was as ready as he was. Um, and so at this point, I also had to really look at, and I had this, you know, candid conversation with my husband also about like, do I really want this or am I unconsciously blocking it? Because there's part of me, you know, just like when we manifest anything, right? If we want to manifest the book deal, but we're petrified, <laughs> of being so public and having our work out there. We want to manifest a million dollars, but we're actually scared of like, what's it going to be like to hold a million dollars? How are we going to pay taxes on a million dollars, right? We block our manifestations that way. So similar with baby, I was looking at what are all the things that I'm scared of around actually this manifestation happening. And, you know, just to be super transparent, because that's what we do here, <laughs> there were a lot. Um, I've known my whole life that I wanted to become a mother at some point and I wanted to have that experience of being pregnant and having a child and, and that. And I also am such 
an independent, freedom-focused career woman. (laughs) And there were a lot of stories I had in my head around having this baby is going to change things forever. And, you know, my mother worked up until she had me and then never really worked again. She, you know, she worked um, a few jobs here and there as like a school aide and things like that when we were kids. But, you know, she was, you know, would like wear a suit, go into Rockefeller Center, do her thing. And then all that shifted when she had kids. And so that was kind of the imprint that I had growing up with a stay-at-home mom was that once kids are in the picture, like mom's job's not going to be successful, right? Or mom's not going to be able to dedicate time to her own job. And even though I know obviously that that was just one example of, you know, my family and how I was raised. And I have plenty of friends that I grew up with (laughs) that also had moms that went back to work and, you know, had grandparents or a nanny or whatever that helped pick the kids up from school or, you know, they worked it out. Um, There was a big, big fear in me of this baby pretty much, you know, canceling out all the work that I've done. And so I really had to look at that and I had to do my own (laughs) work around that. I had to do tapping. I worked with my therapist. I did some EMDR. And then I also did, you know, if you've ever done any of my programs or worked with me one-on-one when we're manifesting things and we were looking at our fears and we're doing our fear clearings so that we're not blocking it. um, We do all the energetic work right? And we sit with it and we feel it where it's in our body and we, you know, see if it's like a story from this life or stories from past lives. I also felt, you know, I'm a Libra South node. So I've had a lot of past lives where my main focus was partnership. Um, and this year and, and this life, not this year, this life, I'm an Aries North node, which if you don't know astrology, it pretty much means you know, my focus is less on that like kind of partnership dynamic in this lifetime. I've mastered that to whatever degree in my past lives and is really on being like an independent trailblazer. And while that doesn't mean obviously I can't have a marriage, I can't have a family, it just means that like my focus is different. And so looking at all of that and being like, of course it makes sense, but here I am in this lifetime to show myself that I get to have both, to show myself that I get to be the kind of mom and the kind of wife and the kind of woman that I choose to be. And, um, and that every woman, when they approach this thing, has their own choices to make and their own journey. And I believe that all of us should be following our heart and our inspiration and our intuition and what feels best to us. And I don't think there is a wrong choice. <laughs> I think the the choice is the choice that feels aligned with your soul's path, right? And so there was a real fear that I think I was going to be pulled into a path that didn't feel aligned. And really also working on the strategic and the practical of that which is, again, what, what I have my clients do, what I have everybody in Divinely Design Your Life do is, okay, well, like, let's come up with a game plan then. So I really looked at, and, and this was like, I'm not even pregnant yet at this point, guys, right? But I had conversations with my husband around, okay, what is support going to look like? I looked at my work schedule. I looked at my team. I already started moving things around to be like, okay, maybe there's two or three days a week that I do my clients and live interviews and filming or whatever. And how can I shift it to work less? Um, so that when that baby comes, I will be confident that I can get what I need to get done in a shortened amount of time and still have time to be present and also, you know, have time to have support for a few days. So I need to, so I can still show up for my work and, and my passion and what I love. Right. 
And so we ironed out all those details. We had all those conversations. We came up with game plans and that really did relax me. One of the things I also did, I want to say during that time, in case anybody resonates with how I was feeling, um, is I, I researched and I looked up women that really inspire me that I feel like are slaying it that have babies. And I'm also really lucky that I have some friends and colleagues that, you know, are just a couple years ahead of me in the motherhood journey and are juggling motherhood with a very successful business, with following their passion, with doing what they love. Um, and that really helped me, I think, get over a huge energetic hump. And then at that point, I started feeling even more confident to be more strategic. So I started doing all of those um, ovulation test strips and um, trying to figure out when I was ovulating each month and tracking it. And if you know me, like that's like not my bag. It is like really not my bag. <laughs> but I did it because again, I was like, I am ready. And I sh when I when I'm ready to call in anything, I do both the spiritual and I do the practical. And so we we're doing that. We were doing that for another six plus months, six, seven, eight months. I don't know, it's a bit. And so all in all, had been like way over a year, um, and nothing was happening. And then in August, September, August, in August, it had now been over a year and no action on that front and I really had to surrender like first of all for anyone that's been on a conception journey taking that pregnancy test I mostly tried to not take the pregnancy test every month to just like wait it out and see when my period came um but getting your period or taking that test every month can be really disheartening um it's kind of like if you're manifesting something, getting a letter in the mail at the end of every month being like, you didn't manifest it this month, <laughs> right? So I had to do, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to pat myself on the back here. You know, at a certain point when I started really getting, I got like upset, um, I just knew I had to surrender. I couldn't let it be. I stopped. I mean, I was still doing like eating healthy, exercising, all that stuff, but I stopped reading a lot of books on it. I stopped listening to the podcast on it. I focused my attention on my business elsewhere. I'm like, I'm doing all the things. Do, 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 do. Um, and it really helped. It really helped me become less attached to it. At the same time, I did decide to go see my OB. Um, both me and my husband went and just did some like basic testing to see if there were any like obvious like biological issues that we needed to pay attention to so that it didn't like keep going on and we were like, oh, it's eventually going to happen. But there was some sort of biological thing that maybe we could have, have shifted. Right. And so I ended up going to the OB and one of the first things she said to me actually, is she's like, I want you to know that I don't, I'm not treating you for infertility because I don't believe that you've been trying long enough for that to be conclusive yet. And she said that most women actually take a year to get pregnant. And that was so wild to me because I feel like in my experience, I've known people that either get pregnant pretty fast or people that end up needing, you know, extra resources and support to get pregnant. And so I've only had like one or two people that I knew that took maybe like six months, like right in the middle to get pregnant. Um, and so the fact that she said that to me immediately was like, wow. I mean, my first thought was like more women need to hear this because I think, you know, most women like after six months or whatever would probably start to freak out, right? And so that felt really good. And she did some like, you know, we did some preliminary blood work and everything and everything looked fine on our end. However, she wanted to do this dye test. And there's this dye that you can put into your fallopian tubes and see if there are any 
scar tissue or blockage is in your fallopian tubes and helps clear it, right? In case that's like impeding um, thing. And then afterwards you do a little ultrasound just to like check out how everything is. And so she was like, I really think we should just do this because if it is something, it's a really um, minor thing. If you end up having scar tissue or something like that, most of the time you're able to clear it or move it. Sometimes the dye itself just clears some stuff up. And so she was like, yeah, a lot of women actually get pregnant after they do this because it ends up clearing any things and yada, yada, yada. I get into my car, <laughs> but the caveat with that test is that you have to do it on like the third to fifth day after your period or something like that. And so I had already had my period and we had to wait until my next period cycle um, because you can't do it if there's any chance of you being pregnant. And so I get into my car <laughs> after the this OB appointment and I started talking to my spirit baby and I was like, listen, if you are up there, if you are up there and you're like thinking of coming down in the next like three, four months, if you could do mama a solid <laughs> and come this month, I would really, really appreciate it because I really don't want to get this dye test. And if you come, then I won't be able to, and it'll be, you know, our first ultrasound instead. And so I'm literally just talking out loud in my car. And that was, you know, I, the first time in a bit I had talked to my spirit baby, so to speak, the way I would talk to my spiritual guides. I did it a bit at the beginning, like when we were calling in, um, I've read the book Spirit Babies, Cosmic Cradle. If you're thinking of conceiving and you haven't read those two books, absolutely read them. Spirit Babies, Cosmic Cradle. Can't recommend them enough. Um, and then I did the, there's like a little chant to call on the soul of your child that me and my husband did in Spirit Babies. And, um, and I also, so at that time, you know, I spoke and was like, I'm ready for you and all that. I had also had... Um, a spirit baby's psychic reading, <laughs> um, like at this point probably was like right before we even got married or right after we got married. So a while back in the beginning of our journey to kind of see what was coming in. And it was really interesting. Um, the first reading we had was her confirming a lot of things that I had already felt um, coming in and maybe we'll save this for um, <laughs> a gender reveal episode or something but and then when it wasn't happening I went back to her again and she was saying that the baby had decided the, the that there were two souls that wanted to come in and they had switched kind of their rotation meanwhile when this was happening there was also like a few other times when I had been on a reading that people were telling me that there was this um, there was like a baby coming in and I actually had done a mediumship reading with, um, my lovely friend, Linda Hughes, who's incredible. She's mindful wishes on Instagram and I use her. She's also been on an episode of the podcast. If you're curious, uh, you can look up her episode on mediumship and, um, I use her to connect with my grandma a lot because I just love it. I talk to my grandma all the time, but having Linda's like affirmations and confirmations and the things that come through just always um, reassure me and make me feel so good. And so my grandma had come through and had kind of talked to Linda about letting me know that, you know, I was ready and this baby was ready and it was time and, you know, all this stuff. And so I had had all these kind of things come in, but then nothing had happened. Um, and so anyway, after that little spirit, the most casual of spirit baby conversations, um, I kind of throw it up, right? I'm like, okay, um, once again, one of the things that, sorry, I keep on hitting the mic. I hope that's not horrible on your ears. Um, one of the things I tell a lot of my students when we're manifesting is like, you have to know when to kind of put something on a back burner. And oftentimes we can put something on a back burner when 
it's easier for us to put something on a back burner when we feel like we've shown up to our side of the street, right? So I'm like, I'm showing up to my side of the street. I've checked my boxes. I'm doing the thing. I'm even doing the Western medicine thing, which is not always my first love thing to do. <laughs> but I'm trying to do my diligence here and be a good, responsible person, check all my boxes. And so I think the fact that I had been checking all my boxes really helped me surrender even more. And I said that little prayer to my spirit baby and told them, but deep down, I, I'll just be honest with you, I didn't really have high hopes of being pregnant that month. Um, I had really surrendered it because there were so many times where I thought I was that it just didn't happen. And also people ask all the time like, oh, did you have signs <laughs> that you were pregnant before you found out? And I know some women do, so I'm not saying that this is like not ever a thing, but um, there were so many months along the path where I was like, oh my God, I think I'm pregnant. <laughs> or like, wow, I'm really bloated. Maybe I'm pregnant. Oh wow. Like, you know, um, there were so many months where I thought, and it was really frustrating because also I consider myself super intuitive and tapped in and all this stuff. So there were, uh, there were a couple months there that I really thought I was, that I definitely <laughs> wasn't. Um, and then that month, that faithful month, I definitely didn't think I was. I felt totally normal, totally fine. And it was the day I was supposed to get my period. And we were going out with a couple, a uh, couple that lived by us that, you know, on a little couple's double date. And we we're going to this taco place. And I really wanted to get I don't really like a lot of alcohol, but one of my favorite beverages when I drink is a Paloma, um, which is like tequila, grapefruit, soda, lime, right? And so I was like, oh, I'd love to get a Paloma tonight, and I haven't been drinking a lot. Let me do a pregnancy test just to make sure it's negative this month, and then I'll enjoy my one Paloma with my tacos, right? And I literally just did it because I wanted to be able to like guilt-free <laughs> enjoy my Paloma um, and not feel like I could potentially be poisoning a baby or whatever. <laughs> I know some people also don't believe um, that out, like think that you can drink moderately during pregnancy and I'm not here to argue whatever. I personally just have just been like, I don't want to risk anything um, and it's not worth it to me to risk it. Anyway, so I take this pregnancy test literally right as we're like rushing to go out the door to this Mexican restaurant and it's positive. And I am like freaking out inside, freaking out. And I don't want to tell my husband because I already, I had bought this cute onesie and I had this whole plan of how I was going to share it with him. And so I have to keep it to myself. So my husband's like, what are you doing in there? And I'm like, nothing. I'm fine. Like, I'll be on in a second. I like wrap it up in toilet paper, throw it in the trash so he doesn't see it. Um, and then go out to dinner. And the whole time I'm like internally freaking out because I'm so surprised. And I know that it sounds nuts that after like trying for almost a year and a half that you would be that surprised, but it's almost kind of like I had just so made peace with it continually not happening that it was such a surprise. And that month of all months, I was like, I have absolutely no symptoms, <laughs> absolutely nothing feels like I'm pregnant, right? And so, so that was how I found out and I made it through, I got an iced tea or whatever um, and nobody thought anything of it because I don't really drink a lot, which was, which was easy for me. It was easy for me to hide because I'm not, I'm a very rare drinker as it is, so nobody thinks it's suspicious when I don't order alcohol because it's what I do most of the time anyway. And, but I'm just like bubbling inside. And then, then <laughs> and, and also like part of me is, I'm going to be honest, like a little paranoid, like maybe I did it wrong. Maybe it's not. And I'm like anxious. I don't want to, I really want to preserve that special moment with my husband, which um, some of my friends, when I've told them this story, they're like, I do not know how you did not like run and scream and tell them immediately. And I think the reason I didn't was because, um, as some of you might know, um, my husband has a daughter from his first marriage and I know the circumstances and the situation around 
that pregnancy were not ideal and were not um, the way that he hoped he would become a father and, and all that without giving too many details. But I really wanted to make this special for him um, because I had, you know, we had had a lot of some conversations about this because I had had some insecurities around, you know, our child not being his first child. And in a lot of ways, he said, it's, it's going to be a first of a lot of sorts, right? It's going to be a first because our dynamic is so different and we're planning it consciously and all of this stuff, right? So I really wanted to make it special to him. So that's why I was able to not tell him immediately. So as soon as he left for the hospital, or he operates, so that's his work, the work the next morning, I literally bought like six pregnancy tests at CBS, peed on them all just to make sure. And then <laughs> I had a dentist appointment and it was so funny because I'm like, I have to go to this dentist appointment. It was just like a cleaning, but I had to tell them I was pregnant because of course I Google like, do you need to tell the dentist you're pregnant? <laughs> like day one of pregnancy. And they're like, you should absolutely tell your dentist you're pregnant because you shouldn't get x-rays if you're pregnant. And I don't know if they use any other things. You just should let them know. And so I literally told my dentist and his like, nurses and assistants before I told my husband and I felt so guilty about I felt so bad I told everyone I was like please don't say anything like I'm gonna tell him today but I just I needed to go to this dentist appointment first and so by like serendipity my husband calls me after the dentist and he was like hey I have a few hours you want to go out to lunch today and so I'm like sure um and I had bought this really cute onesie that I had bought like now like a year and a half ago. And this onesie said, maybe I'll be a Jedi like my dad or I'll get a note from Hogwarts like my mother. And I thought it was so perfect because my husband is a huge Star Wars fan and I am I love Harry Potter and like all magical things. So it'd be like, you could be a Jedi or be like a witch or wizard, <laughs> right? And so I put it in like a little gift bag and my husband's love language is gifts. So we go out to lunch, we get our food and I'm like, oh, I saw this the other day. I thought of you. I have this little gift for you. <laughs> His reaction was so priceless. Um, <laughs> I might... I might be able to post it somewhere. I have a little, I took a video of it. Um, I don't know if it, I don't know if he said enough words for it to be worth the podcast, but we'll see. Um, but he opens up the onesie and he's like, he reads it and he's confused. And he's like, is this for Carl? And I'm laughing. It's because I dress my dog all the time. And I do buy Carl a lot of clothes. Um, but I'm like, no, look. And I had put in, um, a, the pregnancy test in a Ziploc bag at the bottom of the bag too. And I was like, look, there's one more thing that I think will clarify the gift. And so he looks and he sees it and he like immediately starts crying and it's just like, oh my God, is this real? I, he was just so ecstatic and so overjoyed and just like, and he was like, yeah. He was like, this, this is, it was like, this is the feeling. <laughs> this is the first. <laughs> and this is the feeling of just being like, just so ecstatic. I think it was harder for my husband to not tell people <laughs> than it was for me. Um, but yeah, so that's, I guess that's the, that's the story of the, the beginning of the journey. And then it just, you know, and then, you know, I'll just, uh, before I do like, maybe I'll do a separate like first trimester thing and feel free if there's like specific questions you want me to address on a future video or podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, leave it in the comment section. I'm happy to answer any questions or give you any recs if it's, um, helpful and, um, yeah, 
And that was the beginning. That was the beginning of this beautiful journey. And um, yeah, all I'll say is that for those first few weeks, I, I think it was up until five weeks. So for those first few weeks, I literally had no symptoms. I did not feel pregnant. Um, and I know that's not the case for everyone, but I'm just sharing that that was my experience. That is totally a possibility. Um, and it was just the most mind boggling thing to wrap your head around to like literally like have this little test that says like you're pregnant. Um, and have to just like kind of absorb that in your head. Like this is happening. <laughs> Life is about to change. <laughs> um, it's pretty wild. It's a really, really, really wild experience. And anyway, I don't want to get this, this to be too, too long, but I thought that, you know, in honor of the announcement, I'd share a little bit about the journey and for any of you guys that are on the journey, I really wanted to share about both the clearing of the spiritual blocks and, oh, I, one other thing. Oh my God, I forgot to say this. This is like the most important thing. So in addition to that little spirit baby pep talk, one of the things that did come up, I saw a holistic practitioner to do this thing that's called Mayan abdominal massage. And what it is, is essentially it is getting your cervix in your, your cervix and your uterus and just making sure all of your alignment um, in that lower portion of your body, as well as your back um, is is, you know, aligned right so that you, everything is ideal for conception. And it's just some, it's like a massage. It actually felt great. It's a very in, interesting massage, but it felt great. And it was, um, anyway, but that practitioner, she also gave me some herbs and I was talking to her about what was going on and how we were trying. And she really encouraged me to check my cervical mucus instead of just doing the ovulation strips. And I can't believe that I like left that out because I just want to say for anybody that's on this journey, um, that I think is so much more effective. And that was literally the first month that we aligned um, with my cervical mucus and my cervical mucus that your cervical mucus gets thicker when you're fertile to help um, hold the sperm, right? And so the dates that my strips were telling me I was ovulating didn't exactly line up with my cervical mucus. And, um, but that month I was like, well, let's play around and try this new thing because she just mentioned it. And I really think that that could have been the game changer. Like I like to think there was a little bit of my baby being like, I'm not going to make mom do this gross test. <laughs> but also I think it was that practitioner recommending the cervical mucus. So there's a lot of different um, gadgets you can get that like test that for you. Or you can really just do it yourself. It's, um, it's pretty easy to do. Um, but I, I'm sorry, I wanted to give that just not that like you guys really, if you're just listening to this because you're curious about my journey, it doesn't matter. But if you're listening to this because you're trying to conceive, um, or you think you're going to do that something in the future, it's something that, um, I try to make sure I tell everyone who's on that journey to do, because I do think that that was a really pivotal, um, turning point for us was, was doing the cervical mucus instead of the strips. So anyway, <laughs> so much, so much, so much, maybe TMI, but, um, I do, like I said, I, I hope to be of service because I know one of the things that's been comforting at every stage of this journey. And even now, as I'm, you know, prepping for birth and all of that and early motherhood, it's like hearing people's stories and what they went through and the ups and the downs, it just makes for me, it gave me such comfort, um, Sometimes I heard new ideas, new things that I hadn't tried yet. And a lot of times I just felt less alone um, and more kinship on the journey. So I hope you enjoyed this. And like I said, let me know if you have any specific questions or you want me to do a trimester by trimester kind of recap and tap in about this and 
the spiritual elements as well as the practical elements. I'm here for it. So thank you for listening as always. Thank you for being here along my journey um, as I've, you know, moved and gotten married and had books and now I'm having a baby. Um, I appreciate you so much.